chronic sinus patients are a little bit different. They don't tend to have a lot of pain. They tend to be congested, stopped up. They tend to have achy body. They feel poorly. They may have pressure in their cheeks that they describe to you. They'll describe post-nasal drainage. The drainage tends to be a little discolored. They'll oftentimes have a cough that's associated with those nasal symptoms and chronicity. And they'll be able to tell you when I've had an antibiotic, it's, I've gotten better briefly, but I never quite get well. well what is that, what's the key to that? I, I get an antibiotic and I never quietly get well. well tell me, what's going on in the sinuses? Uh, there are some key anatomic areas, some areas in the sinuses that are the plumbing, if you will. Uh, and if those areas become blocked, uh, then people can feel better while they're on the antibiotic, but as soon as the antibiotic is withdrawn, they slide right back in the same old pit of feeling poorly because of that obstruction. How do you, what, is there a sine qua non? Is there one diagnostic procedure that's, that tells you if they've got sinusitis? Sure, the, the CT scan will tell us. Now CT scan, is that, a, is that a procedure or an x-ray or what? It's an x-ray, and it's different than the regular old x-rays you've had in the office for your chest x-ray. Usually people will sit in a, a piece of equipment that's a large tube, or now we do them sometimes sitting up, and it gives us a three-dimensional representation. Um, if the scanners are good, we'll get uh, representations coming across the face and from different planes that allow us to look into the sinus cavities where we can't see with the light, and it will tell us, is there or is there not swelling in the lining of the sinus? Is there an air fluid level representing some infectious material in the sinus? And it also tells me or you or somebody who's astute in managing sinus problems whether or not there is a, an obstruction uh, in the sinus outflow pathway that puts that patient at long-term risk for recurring, recurring, recurring problems. So let's talk about that sinus and that drainage area. A normal sinus, not infected, no allergies, no nothing, except they've got sinuses. Where do they drain and what's that area called? Uh, the area is called the osteomiatal complex. Big and old medical word, isn't it? But it's just like what? A little tunnel or something it's that they a, drain? It's the common channel through which the ethmoid sinuses and the maxillary sinuses drain into the nose. And those are the sinuses, the ones between the eyes and the ones in the cheeks. Those are the two that are most commonly infected in people that have chronic sinusitis. And they both drain through this one common channel. And you can see it really clearly on an x-ray. And if that channel is plugged with soft tissue or scar or whatever you want to call it, polyps, um, then people well, as I said before, begin to have recurring cycles of infection until that obstruction is removed. If they've got obstruction there in that osteomial unit, that little tunnel, that little drainage area, why does the sinus get infected? What's going on in there that makes it get infected? Is it? Uh, well, there, a sequence of events usually occur that lead to infection in people that have that obstruction. Normally, Pressure's equal in our sinuses to that that's in our surrounding area. So the sinus usually communicates to the outside through the nose. Correct, and it's usually the pressure in the sinus is usually just like there is it is in the room around you. It's the ambient room barometric pressure. And if it becomes plugged, the body tries to reabsorb the gas in a closed off space. That's just the way our body behaves. Uh, and then oxygen level goes down in that space. Because there's no oxygen in there from the air. The sinus lining becomes sick and because so of that. It, it quits trying to get the stuff out of there, exactly. clogs up. And the next step is infection. 